I've been working a lot recently with the Fuel PHP framework, and I thought it would be interesting to go ahead and show people how to use it. Basically, the documentation is good, but all the tutorials I found either were old or they just flat out didn't work. And it got to be a little frustrating for me and my fellow team members. So I thought I'd go ahead and, and help some of you out there if you're suffering a few problems too. I'm going to show you how to do this on the Mac, but you can do this on other platforms as well. Uh, basically, the instructions are the same for any of the Unix based platforms like Linux or the Mac. And in this video, I'm going to cover the downloading, installing, and creating your first Fuel PHP application. Now, there are some assumptions here because this is not a that I have Zend installed on my machine. You do need to have a web server running for this locally or remotely. And to get this working, we're also going to use Git. So I will show you how to install Git on the Mac, which is uh, something you don't need to worry about too much for this, but hopefully you are familiar with it. It's a source control application. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing, what is Fuel PHP? Well, it's an MVC framework, which I'm sure most of you know stands for Model View Controller. And I've got a link here for the documentation, as you can see. And ignore the double HTTP. I just put that in there to catch you out and see if you were paying attention. So the steps that we have to take here, first of all, we need to install Git on OS X, and then we need to install the Fuel PHP framework, and then we'll go ahead and create a site and an application. So let's cover the first part, install Git for OS X. It's actually very simple. All you need to do is go to this URL here and download an installer and just run the installer and install the application. That's all you need to do. And it's actually a Google-based code site. Uh, it's very quick, very small, and it never gives me any problems. So just go ahead and install that application first of all. There's not really much to see. Secondly, we'll go ahead and install the Fuel PHP, and I've got a link there that you can see for the actual link to the documentation that'll walk you through, through the, entour, the entire install procedure, uh, which is actually pretty short, and this is what I will be covering in this video, but I've included the link so you can use it for reference. And then lastly, we'll go ahead and create a site or an application, as it should really be called, and for that, we'll be using the terminal. I like to use iTerm2, but you can certainly use any terminal application of your choice. Even the uh, built-in OSX one is just fine. All right, so I'm just going to quickly show you the web page here. This is the web page for Git for OSX. You click on the link here to download the packages. You just run it and install it, and then you pretty much forget about it. Let's go over to this other tab here. This is the documentation for Fuel PHP for installing it and getting started. And there's just a couple of steps involved. Basically, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run this curl command here. And this will download a file to our machine. And that's pretty much it. Now, what actually happens whenever you go to create an application or a website, you then get the files from, via Git. What happens with this script that you run here, oil create followed by project name is, every time you run that, so every time you create a new project, It'll go ahead and use Git to download the latest version. So you don't have, you know, there's not like a, a pre-downloaded version on your machine that you can use ahead of time. Of course, you could certainly do it that way. But if you use it this way and do this oil create followed by project name, it's always going to go to the web and grab you the latest version. So that's a, a nice little feature, a nice little way of working with it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to basically, instead of seeing me type it, I'm going to can't see there just to copy it to my clipboard. I'll go over to my terminal and I'll just put it in there. And I'm actually going to do this as well. I'll make it a sudo so that just in case it needs the access, I can give it to it. It'll ask me for my machine's password. And there you go. It's downloaded the file and installed it. Now we're ready to go with the site. So let's look at the next command. It's oil create followed by our project name. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. Now, I actually have Zend server set up on my machine, and I have it pointing to my user slash sites folder. Um, that's where I like to keep everything. So that's where I'm at here. And basically, you run this command wherever you want to create the source code for the application. So like I say, depending on how you have your server set up, it could be a different location. Certainly would be a different username, most likely. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just show you first of all, 
that there's there's no files here. So I'm going to go oil, create, and I'll just call this, uh, let's call it fuel PHP test. And it's going to go ahead and run here. Uh, Git's going to go and grab all the files and download. It's going to clone them to our machine. It'll take just a few seconds, depending on your connection speed. All right, it's gone ahead and finished. Let's do a LSAL again. And okay, so you can see it's created this new folder, this fuel PHP test here. So it's created our site for us. Let's go into there, list the files, and it's created some files and some folders. And what I'll do is I'll bring these up in the finder to better explain them. But basically that's the procedure for downloading the basics that you need to get something running. Now again, you may need to configure your particular server for it. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'm somewhat assuming that you're already familiar with doing that. Uh, if not, you know, maybe we'll make a, a video in the future to cover setting up from scratch on the server as well. Uh, I do have some videos out there using MAMP. You could certainly go ahead and use MAMP for it, and you could use those videos to go ahead and install and set that up on your machine. Okay, so here are the files in the finder, and I'm just going to show you them here. We have several folders. The two, really, that you're interested in are the public one, and this is all the files that will be accessible by the public so bear that in mind you know pretty much it's the assets and some basic pages as you can see and then we have this other one here called fuel and this is the actual framework in here and the folder you'll be working in the most is probably this one here the app and if you look in here there's a classes and we have a controller folder and they put a welcome one in here by default for us we have an empty model folder, as we have, don't have any models yet, and a view folder. And inside that view, we have a welcome. And inside the welcome, we have a standard 404 and a hello. So basically, on the install, they create a welcome controller for us and a view controller here. And down here, we have a views folder. And in here is, again, a welcome and some files. These are the views. These are the pages that actually get displayed. We're not going to go into too much detail here on these. I just wanted to show you the layout so you could see the files and in a second you'll understand why. Let's go to the web browser and I've put in again my fuel php test dot local. That's the name that in my virtual hosts and in my host file on my machine that that's what I've given pointed to my local installation of Zen to serve up. But notice something interesting. We've got an index of the files here and not displaying the website. And the reason being is you need to be careful here because you'll need to set up your web server, be it local or remote, to actually serve up by default this public folder because that's where you want to give people access to the files. So if I just click on the public folder, there you are. You see now we're being served up the actual website. So that's a very important thing to remember when you're configuring this on the server is to point to this public folder. And in here, basically, you can see that we already have a working installation now of the Fuel PHP framework. So that's all you need to do to get started. I know it seems like a lot, but once you've done it a couple of times, believe me, it becomes second nature. And now you can start playing with the documentation and working through and creating your Fuel PHP website. We will be doing some more videos um, on various aspects of Fuel PHP, but I just wanted to cover the basics of getting a locally installed development version, if you like, for you to play with and just to show you how to go about doing that in a few simple steps. Be sure to visit our website, uibuzz.com, for more videos on many different topics.